Listen to me. I'll tell you what's going to come of you. You are going to grow up and be a strong, smart young woman. Go to school. Meet a fine young man. Have beautiful children of your own. And you're going to build wonderful things. And that is what is going to happen to you. I have a game for you today. We're gonna play a movie version of the game, Would You Rather. Would you rather get to do as many takes as you'd like or have to nail it in one? Nail it in one. Were there ever any instances on this shoot where you kind of couldn't get the amount of time you needed and really had to knock something out? Yes. Um, the Dallas, Texas scene where she faces off on the man. Uh, the scene where the little girls make their paper creations. They had to do it in one. Um, the scene where uh, she and Edgar meet in the hallway and fall in love. Jennifer was literally um, ill and vomiting between takes. And then she would take mouthwash and come back. And yet the illness, because of how she works as an actress, she used the illness to make herself, she seemed more and more vulnerable how an illness will make you. You know, you just want to be a baby right? when you're yeah. sick. It, it, it regresses you. So she just became more and more vulnerable and younger. And we all, we all were saying, are you sure? Are you OK? And she would just go throw up. And I said, we got one take of their romance thing. On oh, one of the great moments between her and Diane Ladd, where Diane Ladd, she says, I'm just going to give up. I, I'm a failure. I'm a humiliation. And her grandmother says, no, you were born to become the matriarch. And she says, what are you kidding? I can't even support my children. And she says, the unanxious presence. You were born to be the unanxious presence in the room, a term I've been waiting seven years to use that I heard at the installation of a rabbi when the old guy said to him, are you prepared to do this as part of your job? And I was like, wow, that's part of his job, to be the unanxious presence in the room. So that's so then we got one take of that. Those all panned out very well. Yes, <laughs> that's one of my favorite moments. Yeah. Would you rather work with an actor who prepares too much or not enough? Not enough. Have you ever been in that situation? Sure, sure, yeah. And what do you do? What's your go-to tactic to kind of get no, no, everything no, no, straight? No, 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 no. They have to put if they if they're willing to trust me and put put uh, join hands together and uh, leap, it'll be great. But it means if they're not prepared, then they have to. Be prepared. They can't. Uh, they, they therefore then they can't. Uh, they gotta just do it. Yeah. Would you rather work with twenty angry PAs or one angry lead actor? That's hysterical. It's just hysterical. Why are you, did you really ask everybody these questions? You did not. Yours are tailored to Why? a director, Why? but this many director? people got this. Sue, <laughs> intervene, make an intervention. You don't have to answer. You can't on that one. 20 angry PAs, one angry actor. I mean, you know, to be honest with you, I, I mean, you'll do anything for the movie, as Kazan said. You'll do anything for the movie. The director is the one. Nobody cares more than the director about the film. You will care. You will do anything for it, like it's your child. So my answer is yes to both things. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Listen to me. Never speak on my behalf about my business again. To love somebody, to love somebody, the way I love you